G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and you've reached part 6 of the Revit API um, sort of mini-series within our Python series for Dynamo, um, and today we're going to be looking at generating areas from rooms, um, so creating some more Revit elements and setting some of their properties. So we've got some previous videos that you probably want to catch up on, at the very least I recommend you watch the previous two parts because this is sort of like a three-part mini-series within a series, um, but yeah, areas from rooms. So in this video, we're going to navigate the Revit API docs as we always have. Um, we're then going to be using a function to get parameter values. So this is a more useful sort of generic function um, or method that we use um, quite a lot in Python for Dynamo. We're then going to create areas and we're going to set the areas properties based on these values that we've derived from our rooms. So let's get started. So we've looked at a three part based workflow. In part one, we got the curves from rooms in Dynamo. And then in part two, we generated area boundary lines using these curves. And now we're going to fill them with areas based on the rooms that were generated from the initial script. So we're going to have to use the location dot point uh, property of our rooms in order to find out the location that the room sits at. Um, the room is being seen as a, a spatial element class in this case, or a spatial element of that class. Uh, as well as that, we're going to be using the getParameters method, um, which is a very useful method where you can obtain a parameter by name, um, and then we're going to be converting it to a string using just a dot to string method. We're also going to need to, cre to create an area, um, but we're also going to need to set its name and number properties uh, for the area after. Um, so we're going to be using the, 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 the new area method, um, which I don't think I've shown here, um, but I will show you it in the Revit API docs. Maybe I'll just do that now. And we'll just look for new area. And we'll find the new area method, which should belong to the document creation namespace or the Revit creation namespace under the, doc the document class. And in this case, we're going to be creating a new area, um, which is going to need to be in a specific area view at a specific UV point, which is the point we're going to obtain of our room. And then, uh, then we're going to be setting the name and the number properties um, as an area um, under the area class. So that's more or less our workflow we're going to follow. Um, so let's get started. I always do that. <laughs> okay, so this is where we finished up last time. In part one, we generated the, the Python script that essentially is within this custom node um, that you can find in my custom package called crumple on my GitHub. We then flattened the output curves that came from this and then turned them all into area lines within the active view. So we pretty much ended up here. So we've got these area bounding curves, but we don't have any areas to place in here. What we want to do is take the rooms from that same level that we've generated our area curves from. Uh, and then we want to take their numbers and their names, create the rooms here as areas and set their number and their name to match the respective room. So let's get started. Um, so in this case, I'm probably just going to have to, hmm, should I freeze this? Yeah, I'll freeze it. So we're going to freeze our area line generation node um, just so it doesn't keep generating area lines every time we run um, because we're going to do a little bit of testing before we do a creation method. So let's just uh, expand Dynamo and as usual we're going to get a Python script node to begin with. Just hook that up. Um, so we're going to have two variables in this case. Uh, the first one will be a list of rooms. So what I actually need to go and collect is my rooms. So I'll just go push these out of the way. And then we're going to generate these from a view. So in this case, I'm just going to collect um, the current document and the active view node. I'm just going to hook that up to that. And we'll take this as our second input. So we'll have a view, which in this case is an area plan. You need to make sure that it's an area plan that you're looking at because you can only create areas in area plans, obviously. So let's just jump in and edit our Python script and we'll just expand it. Um, and as usual, I'll just probably go and take out a few namespaces that we're not going to use. So we're not using proto geometry or system. And in this case, we're not using API UI. It's pretty rare that we use that in Dynamo. Um, but we will keep everything else. Um, in this case, we only need the active doc. So we'll just keep doc. 
um, as document manager.instance.currentdb document. So this is pretty much a, a ritual that you know I follow in every single script, um, but I like to include it just in case someone's new to this uh, this series. Okay, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is just define a function, just do a little bit of reinforcement for something that we haven't done for a little while. And I'm just going to define a function, and I'm just going to do an unwrap list function. So we only need one input, which is going to be our input in this case um, for the first input. We're going to first say that we're going to define a variable called two lists, and we're going to say it's input if is instance, and we're going to check if the input is a list else we're going to put input in a list we're then going to define a variable called unwrap and we're going to unwrap element and we're going to unwrap two lists and then we're just going to return unwrap so we've defined a little function um, just because I thought it was good to reinforce that okay now let's set some inputs so in this case we're going to say that the room list which we're going to collect as all our rooms as a list, um, which we do need to unwrap as well. Um, we're just going to call on the unwrap list function that we've just defined. So uw list, and we're just going to take input zero. So this will just give us an unwrap list of rooms straight away. Um, in this case, it looks like I've probably, ah, I just need to take out my output. So I'll just call my output uh, one as a string for now. But so now we've got our rooms as an unwrapped list that we can work with with Revit API. Um, as well as that, we also need in this case to get our view. So we're going to get our Revit view. And in, we're also going to unwrap this element so we can process it through the API. And in this case, I'm just unwrapping the second input, so in one. Okay, so in this case, we are going to need a transaction manager because we are going to be creating elements. So I'm just going to work between my transaction manager, start and finish. Um, we're going to define some empty lists so that we can pass some values out of our script on the other end. So I'm going to say that I want areas. So these are the areas that I'll build as Dynamo elements. So we're going to have to convert them back. Um, the numbers and the names that are being set. Because there might be a purpose for having those on the other end of the node. And we're just going to make three empty lists separated by commas. Okay, so we're going to start and we're going to iterate over our room list. So we're going to say for room as a local variable in rooms underscore list colon. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the location of our room. So we're going to say location, or we're just going to call it loc in this case, just as the local variable is equal to our room. And we're going to apply the location method to the room. And then we're going to apply the point method to obtain well, the location property and then Get, get the point of that. So we're getting all the points that our rooms occur at now. We can just test that really quickly, um, probably by, hmm. uh, I mean, we could technically go and append it, I guess we could do like append areas. So we'll just append, actually we'll append two areas, we'll append location, just so we can temporarily see what we're dealing with. In this case, I think there's an error. Um, rooms underscore list, I must have mistyped. Ah, I'll say rooms list instead of room list. And I've still got an error. Line 42, append is not defined. Ah, I've done it the wrong way around. It needs to be areas.append. So append is a method, my bad. So at the moment, we're just passing out some Revit points. So you can see them there. They're currently not Dynamo processable points. They're just Revit points. So we can see that we've successfully got the location of our rooms as a point. So I'll just take out that append function again and just say for now that we're just passing out an empty list. Okay, so we've got our point. We're gonna create an area now. So we're gonna say area equals doc, so document, dot create. So we're using our create uh, method or document creation namespace. And we're gonna create the new area. And we need the variables to do this. So remember, if we look at new area method, we need the view and the point. So we have both of these. So the first thing we're going to do is just pass in view underscore Revit, or just our view variable that's unwrapped. Now we need to build a UV. So we're going to make a UV. In this case, we need to do it using location X. So we're calling on the location of the X coordinate, so uppercase X, and also Y, because the UV is only comprised of an X and a Y coordinate in this case. And that should work. Um, I believe the UV class should be on here as well. So that's what I'm using here. I'm using the UV class. 
and I think in this case it might show me how to create the UV. There we go. So I'm creating a UV with values, uh, two values in this case. Well, the UV constructor, so double U and double V, which in this case are my X and my Y coordinates. The dot X and dot Y methods might be, or the dot, dot X dot Y properties might be on here as well, or there might be a property of the point class itself. So if I just look for point class, properties. I'm not sure if it's going to list the actual dot x dot y dot z properties. I don't believe it's showing them by the looks of it, unless they're a method. No, so in this case it's not showing me the dot x dot y dot z um, properties, but that, that, that's how you do it I guess. It's a shame they're not visible. But I believe they are Revit API um, properties, but they're just very simple ones I guess. Okay, so we've got our areas essentially created at this point. Um, so at this point, I could probably just run the script and see what happens. What I might do is just um, append these areas. So I'm just gonna say areas append, and I'm just gonna say that I'm converting my area, but I need to convert it to 2DS type. So we can send it back to Dynamo. And it was created in this script, so I'll say false, because it was created. Um, and then our out will just make it areas. So if I run this, we should have just created a set of areas. There we go. So we've created them all. In this case, it looks like I haven't left my area boundary lines. So we'll go and regenerate those after. Um, at the moment, you can see everything's just coming in with default values. Everything's called area. And it's just six, three, two. So it's not, it's not matching our rooms. So now we want to look at the properties of our room and match them to our areas we've just created. So I'll just undo this. And I'll just jump in here again. And now we're gonna get some parameters from our room. So the first thing we'll do is we'll get our number and our name of our room. So I'm just gonna work between this line and we'll just do all our appending right at the end. I'm gonna say that number or num. And we're gonna take our room, which is our local variable in our list of rooms. And we're gonna do a, the get parameters method. And in this case, you type in the, the name of the parameter you're looking for, which is number. Um, and then it's a list. So we need to get the first item, even if it's just a list of one value. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get index zero. So I'm chaining that onto my, onto my method. And then I'm turning it into a string. So at the moment, it's just a parameter value. So we need to turn it into a string. And we'll just do that. As well as this, we also wanna get our name. So I'll just copy this line and I'll just call this name. And it's almost the same thing, but we just changed the name of the parameter we're looking for. So now we should have these for each respective uh, room that we're iterating over. What I can do with that is then just set the properties of the area. So I can say area.name equals name and area.number equals number. And then I can just append these values as well. So I can just go here and I can just say nums append and I'll just append number and name dot append and I'll just append the name. So in this case, uh, sorry, I think this is nams. In this case, I've called this or so names. Yeah, names. Okay, so essentially at the moment we should see everything. I'll just change my output to a list and I'll just say that it's areas, comma, numbers, comma names. So hopefully this should now work. Um, there might be a typo or two, but fingers crossed if I just run. Yeah, I've made a couple of typos probably. So in line 47. So in this case, ah, num. There we go. I might need to undo what I've done just because it probably still tried to create the first one anyway. Let's try that again. Line 51. Oh, no, I've just called my variable the wrong name. I nearly always make one or two mistakes because Python's very specific. Okay, let's try again. Okay, now it looks like it's worked and we can see we've got our areas, we've got our numbers and we've got our names ready to pass through in Dynamo. We've made our areas. So you can see now this matches the room's respective number and name as do all the other ones as well. So um, pretty, pretty cool and pretty useful. Uh, but now we'll just put it all together in Dynamo and just run it all at once. So I'll just keep this node and I'll just save. We're also gonna generate our area lines from our, our curves in Revit. And we're gonna generate our areas at the same time. So, um, so pretty cool. And I can also just connect my active view up here as well.
So we've taken this from part two and we've taken this from part one of this little mini series and now part three. So what I'll do is I'll just go back until I don't have areas and I don't have area boundary lines and hopefully it should just work. Um, usually when I say that it doesn't, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so if I run this, okay, it didn't generate areas by the looks of it. I might just reboot my session just to remove any element bindings that might be preventing this from working. Okay, let's try that. There we go. So you can see we've generated areas, we've generated area lines, and that's pretty much it. We've um we've got a workflow that can work for any any view essentially. So I could go to say level two instead, and I could make a new area plan on level two. Just close level one. So I've got this as my as my level, um, and I need to make this my active view. And I'll just close this, reopen it, and we just need to go and change our level that we're focusing on to level two, so we can collect all our rooms from level two. Run. In this case, I did make the areas. I just haven't shown them in my visibility graphic settings. Cool, and there you go. So you can see it's a really adaptable workflow um, that's really quick and really easy to set up. Um, so really handy. And from there, you can obviously go and finesse your area boundary lines to suit your area measurement strategies. Um, so pretty useful. Um, there we go. So that was um, sort of this part. Um, in some future parts, which I'm just probably just gonna double back and show a couple of really generic methods um, like getting and setting parameter values. We've sort of seen one way to set, uh, to get parameter values there and set properties but not to set parameters of elements because sometimes a, a parameter isn't the same thing as a property. Um, so really important. Um, but yeah, after that, we'll look at filtered element collectors. And just a reminder that all these nodes today are on GitHub. So that node is actually just under areas, under Revit in my package. And it's just called areas from rooms. So essentially it's the same, the same as what we just did there, but instead it just looks a little bit like that. So it's nice and neat, just a really small little simple script um, with a couple of Python scripts to do the heavy lifting. Um, but otherwise, yeah, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, I make videos about two times a week and try, I'll try to keep doing so for a while. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care, bye.